Thanks for joining us again today on the show. I'm super excited to have an incredible new author, uh, <laughs> Esther Spina, here on the show today. And we're going to be talking about a fantastic book that Esther just finished building and is now launching. It's called Ambitious Women. Uh, Esther's story is incredible. Esther has spent uh, a couple of decades proving that women can be ambitious through every adversity imaginable. But now we've got a book. Right. So what, whatever possessed you, in spite of all the success you've had, you've literally built massive sales organizations and had very successful businesses in a couple of industries, and now a book. What is it all about? Well, I, I didn't really start out to have a book, uh, Ken, but I think it's almost your responsibility. As I've gone through life and had adversity and had success, I feel like it's selfish to kind of keep it all to yourself that it really, uh, through my um, raw, raw team, my kids, my family, my friends saying, you know what, you really need to share this. You really need to tell how did you do it? How did you become successful? How do you get up every morning and be ambitious? <laughs> um, and I think just through the years, it wasn't something I intended to do or I ever thought I would do. But uh, I think now's the time um, because I want to leave a legacy, and I believe that uh, one of the ways to do that truly is if you write it down. Right. So the book is called Ambitious Women, and having had a chance to go through the material with you and, and read the book, I, I've realized that for you, ambitious means a lot more than just being motivated to make money. What does ambition mean? Where did the, the inspiration for that subject and all that content in the book being wrapped around it. What is it? What's it all about? Well, I think ambition sometimes is uh, a word that some people take very lightly, like, oh, they're ambitious or they have a lot of ambition. But when you really understand what ambition is and being ambitious, it is it's such a strong desire within you that takes over you and nothing will stop you from achieving your goal. Mm -hmm. Nothing will will stop you from being ambitious. And you can also take that over that if you're ambitious, nothing will stop you from overcoming adversity. So what are you hoping that this book does? I mean, you know, as so many of the guests that we've had in this program um, are doing what they're doing with some type of end game in mind. I have to believe that there is some type of higher reason for, for putting all this legacy into a book. I. You know, um, we've talked a lot about my history, and I've always been uh, in the job world, business world, career world, been uh, working with men. And somewhere along that line, and I love men, don't get me wrong, because I have a husband, I have three sons, I have three grandsons. But I, as a woman, just became passionate about helping other women become passionate and ambitious. Mm. Uh, because like I said, I don't think it's necessarily born within you, but you can help somebody become ambitious if you can find what their why is or what they want to achieve or what their goals are. And when somebody gets a hold of their goals or their why and get a direction, they can become ambitious. And once a woman becomes ambitious, Ken, there is Look nothing out. stopping her. So my purpose is to help other women be inspired and encouraged and be ambitious. I have had a chance to talk to many authors on the show and in, in our business. And what, I've, what I've noticed is there are too many blah, 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 rags to riches stories out right. there. And, and I, I was expecting that, to be really honest. Yeah. I mean, you're an incredibly successful entrepreneur. You're the top female salesperson in a billion dollar company. Right. And you make a seven-figure income every year, now motivating the salespeople in your organization. And so I really was expecting that rags to riches story, but I didn't get that. I was inspired because there's stories of, oh gosh, everything from losing a baby to losing a life to losing a business. Right. Um, a lot of intimate details mm -hmm. in there. I'm guessing you did that because what I saw. It, it, saw, it looked to me like regardless of what a woman is going through, there's an answer in that book. Right, and, and I think that if you're going to write a story or a book, you, you better be transparent. And that isn't an easy thing for me, that's not me. Uh, but 
in public. And I, but I just felt like, you know, you're not going to inspire other women if they can't see themselves in you. Right. If you cannot be on their level, if you cannot feel their pain, if you cannot walk through them and tell them, you know, this will pass. You will get through this. And that's why it was pretty humbling. And it's there's some things in there that I would have never told anybody uh, in my life. But I felt like that if it was going to be successful, I needed to not be superficial and I needed to really be down where the women were. And I feel like I do, I do understand them because I am a woman. So there's a couple of issues in there that I really think it would be a blessing to all of our viewers to talk about. One of them was an earlier part of your life where things were going great. You had a title company and that title company disappeared. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, um, you know, and I've told you, I'm not an uh, entrepreneur. Um, I don't even know where I got that from. I mean, I am, a, I am now, I have that entrepreneur spirit. But I have I, my mom and dad, my grandparents, no one, I can go back to my history of my family and I don't find anybody that's an entrepreneur. But very early young uh, in my marriage, we, my husband and I started a tile company and we started it in our garage um, with my little babies and we became very successful just, I, I guess, because we were ambitious. Okay. We got that trait and we were going to make this work. And there were very many years that we were so successful and had everything and thought we owned the world and we would always have money coming in. And then, of course, a recession came. And with just in months, a matter of months, not even years, in months, uh, and I know uh, we lost everything and we couldn't even downsize fast enough. And that was probably the most humbling uh time of my life. So I have such uh, compassion for when I hear about people like this last recession in two, 2008. I mean, I didn't have to go through it at that point because I was in a recession-proof business. But I have such compassion that I would never, ever have had for people had I not gone through that. But you know what? You get second chances in life. Oh. We didn't give up. We, we stayed we stayed ambitious, we overcame, and uh, got a second chance in, in life, and here we are. How bad did it get, though, at the, like at the very bottom of this business? Oh. Tell me about it. Well, that. it got pretty bad. Let's see. If you had eight acres of land that you were going to build your dream house on, and, order, and your car was repossessed, and oh in gosh. order to have a car, because you have four little babies at home, you, you trade eight acres of land for a 1970 Dodge van. So I, does that kind of give you a little <laughs> idea of how humbling or how bad it got? How did you get through it? How did you keep going? <sighs> Grace of God. You know, I have to just tell you, I had to do a lot of praying. I had to, because I am the type of person that I could actually thought I could do anything myself. And I'd find a way. And when things are taken out of your hand in a recession, and I know so many people have gone through it, it's not your fault. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the, it's, you're just a, a product of society, of what happens in a the environment. The environment. And so I look back now and I really kind of don't know, except for all I did was rely upon God, my husband, and my children. Uh, I really didn't go out at all or so you don't feel like associating with people. You don't feel like seeing your friends. You, you really just don't feel like doing anything. Right. You survive. But um, through all that, and if, if you just don't give up and you keep your ambitious spirit uh, to survive. You know, we were talking about you, you need an ambitious spirit to be successful. Right. But there are times, women, and you know this, that you've got to have this ambitious spirit just to survive and it works the same way. I was inspired by another story you told over dinner last night. It was a story that spoke to people being open and speaking about their intentions, to be ambitious enough to, to be willing to state how life is going to be it's publicly. And you in your current situation are the top female saleswoman, salesperson in this billion dollar company. But when you were first interviewing and, and 
deciding to get involved with this company, you walked up to the owner of the company and said <laughs> something, you know, most people would just say idiotic, but I would say profound, almost pathetic. Well, here's where ambition played. I wanted to be successful so bad. I mean, it was such a driving desire to make it in this business, you know? And I, uh, they had a kickoff launch. There was a, a dinner and there was maybe 75 people there. I had not met the owner of the company yet and I caught him from my eye. Just something within me said, I need to be accountable. I, I need for myself uh, so that I will be successful. I need to be accountable to him. I walked right over to him and I said, you don't know me, but I'm Esther Spina and I'm going to be somebody someday in this company. And I know he just kind of looked at me like, okay, lady. I've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know that doing that, actually, when there were times when I wanted to quit, I, I couldn't let go of the fact that I had actually really went up to the owner <laughs> of a company and said, I'm going to be somebody and it, it wouldn't let me quit. So was it the fact that if you didn't succeed in, in doing what you said, then you would look like a loser? Yeah, I think I, I'd always tell people uh, that you should always be accountable uh, for things that you want to do. Because if you are, that, that does push you to keep going. Right. And I think people don't because if they fail, nobody knows about it. So they don't have to feel embarrassed or they don't have to know, and nobody needs to know that they failed. So I think that's what prevents a lot of us from really being successful. Number one, we won't share that or be accountable. So it's no loss if we don't make it. Right. But I'm gonna encourage you to take the other end and that's like, be accountable. Right. Tell somebody, tell the owner of a company, tell somebody that you want to make millions of dollars, that you're going to be somebody. And all of a sudden you're speaking that and you're living it and then you can become it. Once you've told the world about it, it's like that if you don't succeed at it, you, then you're a hypocrite. Right. You know, and, and it's, it's even the same way with this, Ken, with writing a book. You know, I, people ask me for years, you should write a book, or you're so good at inspiring people, or you've got so many stories, but I never wanted to tell anybody that I would do it or could do it, because in case it didn't work, same thing, and so now I just had to get out of my comfort zone, and now here I am, you forced me to be on this <laughs> interview, so now everybody knows i am got a book out. <laughs> So if we're talking about ambition, just sort of to put this all into one nice little package at the end of our time together, your suggestion to people is ambition is not just about making a few dollars and being excited about doing it. It's a way of life. It is a way of life and it doesn't come naturally. So you have to work at it. Uh, something else I learned is that successful people do what unsuccessful people will not do. We've been here in the studio today with the author, Esther Spina. Esther, thank you so You're much so for your welcome. time. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me.